Hello friends, today I'm going to be painting socks from the film Lightyear. In this video I'll be talking through my painting process and hopefully you can pick up some tips from it too. I first started off with the darkest areas of the face and then I went in with this bright green to really capture those vibrant irises. For the whites of the eyes I added a touch of pink and grey just to give some shadow, just to give that 3D effect of the eyes. Adding shadow to the whites of the eyes is really important in order to make your painting look realistic and it's often overlooked by beginners. Once I was relatively happy with the white areas of the face, I then began to focus on the other white areas of this cat, namely his chest and his little paws and tail. You'll notice as I do this, I'm not just using black and white, but I'm also using brown just to give a touch of warmth to the shadows. After adding the pinks of the ears, it was time for the fun part, which is adding this bright, vibrant orange that Socks is known for. You'll probably notice that the left side and the right side have very different shades of orange. This is mainly because the right side is in light and the left side is in shadow, so I made sure to be conscious of this in my painting. At this particular stage of the painting, I was struggling a bit with the colour of the collar as I just wasn't getting a vibrant purple that I wanted by mixing red and blue. I then realised that magenta and blue creates a really vibrant purple, whereas red and blue creates a bit of a muddy purple. So if you ever want a vibrant purple, be sure to take note of that. Something that I particularly enjoy when painting fan art is painting the backgrounds. There's just something so atmospheric about movie backgrounds. I think in particular that the artist of the movie really pays attention to the background as well as the subject and picks a colour palette that will really convey a mood and an atmosphere. I really like this scene in particular as Socks is waiting for what Buzz is going to say, yet it still captures his robotic nature as he looks quite stiff in this photo. Once I was happy that I'd coloured in all the spaces of this piece of paper, it was time to start my palette afresh. For this next phase of the painting, I decided to work on the details, and the details are really what ties a painting together. As I looked closely at the reference photo that I was painting socks from, I noticed that he had a very slight fur texture. So I went in with a fine detail brush just to emphasise those little fur strands. I also noticed that I hadn't added any shadow to the cat's ears, so it was time to add that in too. Once I was happy with the orange areas of his face, it was then time to move on to the right side of his body and then the left side of his body. You'll probably notice that I do end up repainting most of this painting, but I think I just find it a lot easier to adjust colours once my page is filled with colour versus a blank empty sheet. Once I was relatively happy with Socks' base colour of his body, it was time to add in those tiny tiny little brush strokes to make sure that he has a little fur texture. I then focused my efforts on working on the white areas of the tail and the little paws of Socks. Again you'll notice that I use a mixture of white, black and brown to create these warm greys for the paws as I notice these hues in the picture. You'll also notice I added a hint of yellow as there seemed to be a little bit of a reflection from the right hand side. Now it's time to work on the most important part of the finishing details was to make sure that those eyes were perfectly round and also add depth to the ears by creating more shadow. I spend a little bit of time working on the eyes as it's really important to get them perfectly circular as this is what makes a convincing cartoon round eye. I hope you enjoyed watching this painting and be sure to let me know down in the comments what you thought of the film and if you haven't already, check out these videos.